My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, International Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Wednesday at 9 and CBS brings you Jeff Regan, Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery, suspense, and adventure in tonight's story of The Two Little Sisters. When a six-foot, 200-pound guy turns up with a knife in his back, maybe a short hundred pounds of cool, green-eyed blonde did it. And maybe she didn't. Well, this time there were two blondes, sisters. They looked alike, but they were about as much alike as a sheepdog and a cobra. Goes to show you can't tell by the package. Their names were Zemanski, Mary and Dolly Zemanski. They worked for the Everybody's Happy Pastime Carnival shows. It was old E. Happy Pastime himself who was sitting in the lion's office when I got there about noon. My boy, glad you've come in. I'd like you to meet our new client, proprietor of the Everybody's Happy Pastime Carnival Shows. No doubt you've heard of them, Jeffrey. Uh, sure, sure. How are you? <laughs> laryngitis. Yeah, our friend here is troubled with laryngitis, Jeffrey. Purely psychological, purely psychological. A result of worry, profound worry. Isn't that right, sir? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Jeffrey... What do we do? Now, Jeffrey, I'm glad you asked that question. To tell the truth, I envy you. Fine opportunity for you to get out of the city while I sit here sweltering in this heat. You, Jeffrey... Get to the point. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Well, Jeffrey, the fact is our friend here leaves on the two o'clock plane for Phoenix, Arizona. Advance arrangements for the carnival. Sure. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. Well, uh, meantime, the star performer of everybody's happy pastime carnival shows, a girl named... Uh, Oh, now, where's that piece of paper? I jotted it down. In, uh, oh, 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 here we are. Uh, Dolly Zemanski, the queen of the blades. Ice skater? <gasps> knife thrower. Oh, I get it. Uh, she, she's a knife thrower with the show, Jeffrey. Best in a line, they say. Well, what's the trouble? That's just it. That's just it. Someone's been threatening her. A man named Rand. Rand. It's upsetting her, Jeffrey. Beginning to show in her work. That's what worries our client here. Well, what's Rand got on her? Well, I don't know, Jeffrey. Our client doesn't know. Isn't that right, sir? <gasps> yes. No, uh, but we'll retain to find out. And get rid of him. Exactly. Get rid of him. Get rid of him, Jeffrey. <laughs> Like the lion said, it was a chance to get out of the city. I drove Father Time back out to his carnival. He had to pick up his stuff and then make the two o'clock plane at International Airport. The carnival was set up on a couple of vacant lots out on Sepulveda. Big sign, everybody's happy pastime carnival shows. Tents, trailers, Ferris wheel, sawdust, the usual stuff. The old guy pointed out Dolly Zemanski's trailer, and I was on my own. I didn't get far. Guy in a 1922 tux, three days whiskers, and a turban like a second-hand bird's nest stopped me. Oh, there. How do you do, sir? The only legitimate thing about the Swami was his breath. That was 90 proof. <laughs> you are Regan. What's up to you? I am Swami Al-Kaji. Step this way, please, into my tent. I will consult the crystal. The crystal ball tells me many things. Yeah? Like what? <laughs> uh, sit right here, Mr. Regan. Thanks. The crystal ball tells me, Mr. Regan, that you've been hired to help Dolly Zemanski. Tells me you have been hired by... Ah, uh, uh, yes, by the owner of our little carnival. How much of that did he tell you? Uh, yes, Mr. Regan, it was he who told me. I uh, saw you arrive together. What do you know about Rand? Fred Rand, let me see. Yes, let me see. The crystal ball is cloudy. Yeah, the sand of time runs through the glass, Mr. Regan. Cut it out. What do you mean? You're a swami like Truman's a Republican. Uh, yes, yes, true. Uh, yes. Well, have a drink, Mr. Regan. Uh, I see much more in this than in the crystal ball. Uh, yes, uh, say when. When? Uh, here you are. Thanks. I'm a four-finger man myself, Mr. Regan. <clears throat> Been my ruin. You said you had information. Yes, there are two sisters. Zemanski? Yes, Dolly and Mary. Who's Mary? The younger sister. She new to the show? A few months with us. Her sister get her the job? Yes, Dolly Zemanski's our star performer. Naturally, she has influence. Okay. 
What about Rand? I will consult the crystal ball. Look, I don't get paid by the hour. What's Rand got on Dolly Zemansky? I don't know. No? I see letters forming in the crystal. Okay, I okay. See Play it your way. F. F. Z. I can't see any more now. Perhaps if you'd care see to. You later. Uh, uh, but, 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 so Mr. Regan. Uh, Mr. Regan. <laughs> Maybe the Swami had something to sell. But if I couldn't get it for free, I could go back and buy it later. It was only a little ways to Dolly Zemansky's trailer. Big, expensive job. Everything was wide open because of the heat, so I walked in. Nobody home. Ladies' clothes lying around. Theatrical makeup. Grease paint stick. Picture of some round-faced guy with a crew cut, signed, Yours adoringly. No name. Knives and daggers around. And a frosty blonde with green eyes in the doorway watching me. What are you doing in here? Homework. It's clever. Who are you? That's what I ought to ask you. Oh, guess. You're Dolly Zemansky. No, I'm her sister. Mary Zemansky. Yes. I'm Jeff Regan, International Detective Bureau. You're, You're a detective? That's it. You joined the carnival about four months ago. Five months. Five months. Been in show business before? No, I... I was a boy back home. That him? What? photo on the dressing table. Oh, no. Mr. Pine. Pine? He's in love with my sister. Pine. Pine, don't I? <laughs> Harold Pine. J.J. Pine's son. Yeah? You know, Pine warehouses, they're all over Los Angeles. So your sister's going to marry them? Why, I think so. But maybe she isn't. Mr. Regan, Suppose I... you give me what you know. Hmm? About four days ago, a guy turned up, Rand. Yes. Your sister scare easy? Oh, no, no, Mr. Regan, that's just it. She's strong-minded. She left home when she was 15. Go on. Well, life can't have been easy for her, you know, show business. Just tell her. Well, she's independent, Mr. Regan. I've tried to tell her... What about Rand? Mr. Regan, I, I can't tell you. Lady, I've got a job to do. What about Rand? I I don't know. Your sister scared of him? I, I... She is or she isn't? It's something else. She told me she didn't know him. She said he was trying to get fresh, but... Twice, I... Oh, I shouldn't tell you this. My fee says I help your sister. All right. There's a little street two blocks up Sepulveda. Twice I walked by there this morning and two days ago. There was a green sedan parked there both times, and Fred Rand and my sister were in it. They were... Well, they seemed to be arguing. Mr. Regan, that's all I know. Okay. How do I find your sister? She performs in the main tent, but she must be just about through. She might be over there. Okay. See you. I started for the main tent, got about halfway up the midway, when he passed me, going down the midway, and into the big shiny trailer. Broad-shouldered, six-foot guy with red hair. And when he went into the Zemansky sister's trailer, I knew he was Rand. I started for the trailer. I thought I heard voices quarreling. <laughs> And then I knew something was wrong. That was Mary Zemansky screaming. I hadn't had my eye off the door of that trailer 60 seconds since I left. Nobody went in but Rand. Nobody came out. But I busted fast. I made the last hundred yards like Mel Patton on Dexedrine. But what I saw when I got inside that trailer stopped me cold. It was Mary Zemansky and Rand. But it wasn't like I figured. Mary was hanging onto the wall and staring down at the floor and sobbing. And on the floor was Rand, with a knife in his back. All right, give it to me. Give it to me fast. No, no, no. no. What happened? Come on. No. no, I can't tell you. I can't. Look, you've got ten seconds before the whole carnival will be in here. What happened? <laughs> tell me what happened. I, I won't talk. I won't talk. All right, both of you, stand back at the end of the trailer. Oh, Who are you? Sergeant Post, police. Hands above your heads. All right, all right. Clear away now. Clear back, folks. You were uh, Dolly Zemansky? No, I... I'm her sister, Mary Zemansky. Your turn, mister. Maybe we can take our hands down? You armed? Yeah. Where till I get it? Hip? Shoulder. Okay. Let him down. Thanks. Got a permit to carry this? Sure. Show it. Regan, private detective, International Detective Bureau. Here's the file copy. Look good, Regan. You kill this guy? Okay, Regan. 
Well, maybe you'll tell me who the guy was. His name was Fred Rand. That check, Regan? What I heard. Maybe you knew Rand, Regan. Nope. How'd you get in here so quick? Heard screams. Sure. Oh, what's the use of all this? You both know what happened. No, what did? <laughs> Mr. Rand came in here and I... Well, he'd been bothering Dolly. Maybe he thought I was Dolly. We look a little bit alike. And he came in and... And? Go on. <laughs> I struggled. And I killed him. <laughs> It hung together like the Jap Navy. She was sore at Rand because he'd been bothering her sister, so when the big six-foot guy came into the trailer, she grabbed him and stabbed him in the back. Sure, it could have happened like that. But from the look that came on Sergeant Post's face, I could see he'd try to make it stick. He looked like a hungry kid at a bakery window. He was seeing Lieutenant Stripes. <laughs> Well, half an hour later, Mary went off for the ride downtown in the paddy wagon. I figured it was a funny thing Dolly Zemanski hadn't showed up. I decided to look for her. But she wasn't around. She'd finished her act a little bit before the ruckus started and it looked like nobody had seen her since. Then I saw a tent with some stars and crescent moons painted on the front, and that reminded me of something. A phony swami with information for sale. He was inside. All right, Swami, get busy on that crystal ball and dish up some answers. Uh, yes. Like F.Z. Ah, yes, yes, the letter's F.Z. Uh, the crystal is clearly... Well, clear it. It's a murder rap now. F.Z. what? Ah. Uh, Rand. Yes, Mr. Reed. Fred Rand. Mrs. Fred Zemansky Rand. Dolly Zemansky was his wife. Now you've said something. <laughs> That gave me something to work on, but halfway to my car, I remembered something else. Something Mary Zemanski had said. A green sedan parked twice in the same place. Maybe it was parked there a third time. It figured the owner wouldn't be driving it away. He was taking a free ride as a guest of the county, to the morgue. It was there, green sedan, on the little street two blocks up Sepulveda. The door was unlocked. The registration on the steering post read... Fred Rand. That figured. The address was on a street called Delancey in San Francisco. But maybe I wouldn't have to go that far. There was a card down on the floorboards. One of those commercial hotel cards. Globe Hotel, Main Street. I stuck it in my pocket. That was when a guy said, I'm gonna kill you, Fred Rand. I hit the car door with my shoulder. That knocked him back, but he came in again and tied for me. I blocked it. Why, you... <coughs> That was when I got a good look at him. He was the guy in the picture in the Zemanski sister's trailer. Yours adoringly, Harold Pine. This is CBS, and you are listening to The Story of the Two Little Sisters, tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. <laughs> I'd like to have stuck around and had a little talk with Harold Pine. Maybe he knew some answers. But one answer he didn't know was who killed Fred Rand. When he made that college try on me and called me Rand, it didn't take the FBI to figure he didn't even know Rand was dead. But it looked like Pine was going to be asleep a while, so I went downtown. The Globe Hotel. Last stop on the line for the canned heat crowd. Brass platoons. Row of cracked leather chairs along the front. Two or three old guys dying in them. Nobody at the desk, so I picked up number 306 from the register and went up. Door wasn't locked. Inside, you could see why. Nothing in the joint but a brass bed. Cardboard suitcase on a chair with a couple of neckties in it. Fred Rand had been traveling light. But there was something else in the suitcase stuck in the lining. Item torn out of the weekly variety, the show business sheet. It said a couple of knife throwers named Duncan and Dolly had checked out of Las Vegas for work at a spot called the Blue Dolphin Casino, Los Angeles. The dateline was half torn off, but you could make out the 46 at the end. There was a phone on the wall, and I tried the Blue Dolphin Casino. There was nobody home, too early for a night spot. So I decided to let the lion work on that one. The International Detective Bureau, Anthony J. Lyon, President speaking. Lyon, I've got something for oh, you to work... Jeffrey, I'm glad you called. I've just talked to the proprietor. 
proprietor of the Everybody's Happy Pastime Carnival shows from Phoenix. So we're off the job. Well, now, Jeffrey, what can we expect? We were retained to get rid of that fellow Rand to, to relieve Miss Dolly Zemanski of any undue nervous stress that might endanger the box office value of her performance. Go on. Now, 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 Jeffrey, it just seems that, uh, well, the, the sister did the job for us. Sure, sure she did. Jeffrey, I don't think I understand you. You can understand this. This job we stick on. Jeffrey, be reasonable. The matter's in the hands of the police. They've got the wrong goose. What's that? I don't think she stabbed a six-foot guy in the back. I think somebody pitched the strike out in through the window. Dolly Zemanski? Maybe. I think that's what her sister thinks. I think that's why she confessed. Oh, I see what you're driving at now. We're defending the innocent again. We're not in business for money, are we, Regan? Why should we be with the world full of poor unfortunates waiting to be held? Cut it out. Regan, from now on, if you want to work for charity, you work alone. You're fired. That's the only good news I've had all day. <laughs> I checked out of Rand's hotel the same way I went in. When I was crossing the street, I saw somebody coming up the other sidewalk. My high school geometry told me that if I walked fast enough, I could get opposite where my car was parked the same time she did. Okay, come on. Go on, Come on, me. sister. Get in the car. You can't do this to me. You're Dolly Zemanski, and I'm doing it. Get in there. And stay still. I don't like you, Dolly. How do you know my name? You look like your sister. Mary? Mary. Who are you? Never mind. Well, where are you taking me? A ride up Hill Street. There's a place to park above Temple. There's a nice view of the city jail. Jail? That's right, jail. All right, there. Like I said... That's a good view. What's the pitch, Regan? How'd you get that? The Regan? It's on the steering post. You got good eyes. Thanks, honey. I didn't say that way. So you don't love me. What's the pitch? See that building down there? The bars on the windows? You said I had good eyes. You know who's in it? No. It's the city jail. Do you know who's in it? No! It's your sister. Mary? Mary. Why? She says she killed a guy named Fred Rand. Fred Rand? Never heard of Fred Rand, then. Eh? Then why were you going to the Globe Hotel? You never heard of that, either. You can get a Talk, will you? <laughs> okay, I will. You get the pine warehouses on the hook. It looks good, but there's just one thing wrong. Fred Rand. You're married to him. The guy turns up. Maybe he heard about Harold Pine. He blackmails you. Okay, he blackmails me, so what? So you want to get rid of him. You come back from your act this afternoon with the knives in your hands. You get near the trailer, the window's open. You see Rand inside arguing with his sister. That must have been an easy pitch for the star of the show. Your sister's locked up down there on a murder rap to cover you, and you got nothing to say. Okay. I got nothing on you. Not now. But you'll talk. Later. Now get out. I got business. That gave me nothing, so I went down to the jail to try to see Mary Zemanski again. It took me an hour to find out I wasn't going to get to her. But I did find out one thing. That cop had done his job well. Mary had signed a written confession to the murder of Rand. I got in my car and bucked traffic out to Ventura Boulevard. I hit a gas station and checked the address of the Blue Dolphin. It was in Encino. That meant it was near the carnival and I could pick it up later. Everybody's happy pastime was doing peak business by the time I got there. The midway was lit up like a sailor on shore leave. But where I went, it was dark. Out in back of the Zemanski sister's trailer, maybe I could pick up some proof that Dolly Zemanski pitched that night that killed Rand. I tripped over a tent rope and bumped into something. Wait a minute. Who are you? I'm Borky. Come on out in the light. Yes, sir. You're Pine. Yes, sir. I'm Pine. Harold Pine. But they call me Porky. Porcupine. I reckon you could say it's a sort of a joke. Porcupine? <laughs> it started when I was in college. Yeah. My name's Regan, private detective. Oh, I owe you an apology, Mr. Regan. Uh, 
mean at, at the car? Skip it. I thought you were Fred Rand. Why were you gunning for him? Fred Rand? Of course, a Dolly. Dolly Zemanski. You're going to marry her, aren't you? Well, I... Uh, What's uh, on your mind? Well, um... Well, now that there's been a murder... Go on. I think I better tell the truth. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, you asked me if I was going to marry Dolly? Well, no, Mr. Regan. Give me that again. I am married to her. San Bernardino. Last Thursday. You married Dolly Zemanski in San Bernardino last Thursday? Yes, sir. My father, J.J. Pine, reckons, Mr. Regan, because of the family money... Sure. Sure, you'd want to keep it quiet because of the old man. Figured he wouldn't want his boy married to a carny performer. You'd break it to him later, so you sneaked to San Bernardino and got tired. <laughs> yes, sir. You couldn't have married Dolly Zemanski. She was married to Fred Rand. Not for three years. Huh? They was divorced, Mr. Regan. You know that? Well, Dolly had the decree. How else we could we have got a marriage last? Did you see the divorce decree? Oh, yes, sir. When was it granted? 1946. Month. You remember? Uh, yes, October. Day? Well, Mr. Regan, I don't see what... What day? October 14th, 1946. October 14th, 1946. Okay. Well, Mr. Regan, I don't Look, understand... Rand showed up again, huh? Yes, sir. So you decided to kill him? He was molesting Dolly. Sure. Well, maybe I'd just beat him up. You're a kid, Pine. Maybe I am. You're keeping bad company. I don't think so. Well, who do you think knife Fred Rand? I don't rightly know. What were you looking for in back of that trailer? Nothing. I didn't think of anything. You know Dolly's sister, Mary? I do. You think she killed Fred Rand? No. Then who did? I don't know. Okay, Pine. You didn't anyway. Well, maybe I was just pretending I didn't know he was dead when I fought with you at his car. No, Porky. You're not that smart. Mr. Reagan, I reckon that's so. Next stop was the Blue Dolphin Casino. The manager wasn't there, so I waited around. Must have been almost midnight before he showed. If you're the manager, I am. You bought it. In here. You book acts? Used them. You ever hear of Duncan and Dolly? Knife throwers? Did they ever play us? 1946. Maybe uh, October? I could look it up. Okay. Over here. Files, over here. Man, plenty of cheesecake on the wall. Oh, those pictures? <laughs> Acts that have played us. Yeah? Yeah. Autographed photos. The Mandy boy, Mandy is me, were just scared to love. Dimples Davis. <laughs> Dimples. You see what I mean? Yeah. I see what you mean. Mm. October 1946? Could be. Uh, no. No. Hey, hey, wait a second. Last week of September. 26 through the 29th. Last week of September, 1946, Duncan and Dolly... Let me see that, will you? Yeah, okay, okay. Dolly Zemanski and Harry Duncan, King and Queen of the Blades. Split week booking, September 26 to 29, 1946. I'm thinking King and Queen of the Blades. Wait a second. Behind this locker. Yeah, photos all over the place. I'm just remembering. We keep the leg on out where you can see it, but this stuff, you see... Yeah, like I'm remembering. The Mandy, sincerely, King and Queen of the Blades, Duncan and Dolly. Let me see that picture. Yeah. You recognize them? Yeah, both of them. Dolly and Duncan. Yeah? What'd it get you? It gets me my answer. I made it fast back to the carnival. The midway was closed, but I could see a light on in one of the tents. I could hear voices. But when I walked in, the light went off. Duncan. The light's back on. That told me where they were. I started. Slow. I waited. Duncan, don't. Put that knife down. Duncan's enough! Ray was enough! All right, Duncan, I'm coming! <laughs> The knife went past, took some air that belonged to me, and stuck in the tent pole. 
He shoved the table at me and I shoved it back. He made a try for the tent door and that was when I got him. Turn the lights on, Dolly. Harry Duncan, a phony swami. He's a rat. You should talk. He... He okay? He'll come out of it. He killed Rand, thought I'd take the fall. You let your sister take the fall and kept your trap shut because you were scared of what he knew. Knew what? Blue Dolphin Casino, end of September 1946. How do you know that? When you were supposed to be in Nevada divorcing Rand. You gotta stay there six weeks, baby. You can't even leave for one day. Figure it out. You're perjured in the Nevada courts. Your divorce is no good. When you married Harold Pine, you weren't divorced from Rand. Guy, Regan. You don't get pine. I'll take care of that. Your marriage to him is good. Like a three dollar bill. Thanks. Maybe I can do something for you sometime. So the Swami killed Ran. That's what I figured wrong. If Mary didn't stick Ran, it had to be a toss job. Somebody had to toss that knife through the trailer window. Somebody professional. I figured you. Till I saw that photo of Duncan and Dolly. Why'd he do it? Because he hated Ran. He loved you. How'd you figure that? Guys fall in love with dames like you. I don't know why. We were a duo, Duncan and Dolly. We were going to get married, but I, I ditched him for Rand. That figures. Rand looked good a while. Dunk went on the bottle when I married Rand. Pretty soon he got too shaky for a knife act. Ended up like this, the phony swami. He said Rand had beat his time with me. Said he'd kill Rand if he got the chance. <laughs> Didn't think he had the nerve. He's coming out of it. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to talk to Dunk. So long, Regan. Get out of here! That wrapped it up for me. The police took it from there, and after a few hours at headquarters, I headed back to my apartment. But if I figured it was that easy to get rid of the lion, I was in for a new set of figures. The lion was there, waiting. Hat in hand. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, my boy, you've come back at last. I heard all about it. I've been waiting for you, Jeffrey. Sure. Candle in the window. Jeffrey, will you ever forgive me? Will you forget the unkind words I've uttered, the meaningless, petty things I've said? Oh, I rue the day I mistrusted you, Jeffrey, my boy. It was madness. Come off it, fatso. But, Jeffrey, I mean it. You were right all along. Mary didn't kill that man. Mary was an innocent girl caught in the tangled web of suspicion. But you, Jeffrey, you defended her in her most trying moments. A noble thing, Jeffrey. But I'm fired. Fired? Oh, nonsense, my boy, nonsense. Haven't I apologized? It's just that I feel so sad about that poor child, Mary, and that pine fellow without the bride he had taken to his heart. What will they ever do, Jeffrey? Save your sympathy, Lion. They'll get along. What? What do you mean by that? Well, when I last saw them, they were sobbing it out on each other's shoulders. You mean it, Jeffrey? They've discovered each other? How charming, how positively charming. And with all those millions he has, too. Millions of dollars. Stop drooling, fatso. There's nothing in it for you. Eh, no, Jeffrey, I suppose not. But I can dream, can't I? <laughs> Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Frug and William Fifield, directed by Sterling Tracy and stars Frank Graham as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Aron. <laughs> Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard each week at the same time over CBS. Bob Stevenson speaking and inviting you to be with us again next Wednesday at 9 for more suspense and mystery and adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.